Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today is September. We have a new battle box. It actually looked like it survived a battle with the United States Postal Service. Let's check it out. All right, so we got a new battle box and hopefully all the content survived shipping. As you can tell from the box, it did sustain a little bit of damage. Hopefully that won't impact anything in this. And let's see here. First thing, we got our card. This is uh, Mission Brief 79, let's see, Mission 79 says, Mission 79 is here for September 2021 with all the things going on around the world today, there's no better time than now to think about preparations. Man, that's true. Mission 79 is here to add to your preps that you should be making. Over time, as a BattleBot subscriber, you should have an impressive number of preps, skills, and tools for survival and adventure. That is very true. So let's not wait any longer. Let's flip the page and break down Mission 79, which we're not going to do right now. Let's just start looking at what we got here. Okay, this is some art bands. These are multi-purpose retainer bands that can be used for securing cables, wires, slings, attaching a tourniquet to your kit, and much more. They are six, uh, six and a quarter inches and they stretch to roughly 11 inches and it says of course length may vary and it looks like there's three of them in here so yeah cool three little three little uh, retention bands always handy here's something that suffered the, the the corner drop of the box this is some um, what is this attacks odor removes moisture protects gear stop gear stink Gear Halo Tactical. Alright, so these are like just some kind of absorption absorption uh, packets that you can put like in your boots. And it's got pictures there. Well actually it's got pictures there. You can you can see. So yeah. These things are uh, you know these things are handy if you know keep things de de uh, de stunkified. There's two of them in here, so you have two two of those things. Alright, that's not too bad. All right, we have a Eton FRX2 hand turbine AM FM weather radio. So yeah, I've never really heard of this brand, but we'll we'll open it up and check it out and see what it's all about. There you go. If you wanna if you wanna read any of that stuff, yeah. So it's a compact. Yeah, it's just a compact weather band radio, has uh, USB charging, LED flashlight. Yeah, I think this is just like most of, of the, I think I have one that's made from, made by Midland, I believe. So you have a little, uh, a USB to a uh, mini USB cable. And we have the actual device. Yeah, and it's, yeah, there's nothing, nothing really special about it has a hand dynamo type crank has a little uh, solar panel charger on the top pull antenna on the back here is where you have all of your connections for your USB and your uh, mini USB so you can hook up for a charger your flashlight which should work yep and then it has just a very simple on off knob there right here with a volume and then you have a, a jog wheel which appears to be a multi-function now what's interesting is it has am fm wb for weather band but it also has something called cell on there i don't know if you can see that or not so yeah interested to see what that is what what does it what could it possibly monitor with the cell function? Anyway, oh, there's an instruction book in here as well. So yeah, I'm not really going to try to puzzle that out right now. But yeah, a little hand crank job.
Yeah. I've got a I've got a Midland that's you know one of these. So these are always nice to have, especially ones that you can either set set it out. Now I don't, of course, you know, that this little solar panel here is not gonna give you a ton of uh, charging capabilities, but it is something. So if you are sitting outside and the power's out, you can just take this thing, set it out on your porch, you know, or anywhere where the it can get sun pretty much all day. Just leave it out there and let it, you know, let it get whatever charge it can get. That just prevents you from having to sit there and hand crank it. So yeah, those things are always handy. So if you don't have one of those, I would recommend getting picking one up. Um, you know, whether uh, Midland makes good ones, like I said, you know, it's just one. It's one I have. We got some food again in, in this one, and this is. Uh, Southern Survival brand made in Colorado. This is some trail chili with uh, spaghetti beans, cheddar cheese, onions, and beef. This is 540 calories per serving. It is actually uh, labeled as one serving. Package is very thin and it weighs, how much does this bag weigh? 4.6 ounces. This is freeze dried. You just put, put water to reconstitute it. And you have tear notches on the pack and it yeah, you do have like a Ziploc tile, a, a Ziploc style closure, so you can reconstitute it in the bag, and it does have a gusseted bottom. So yeah, this is, th these these are really good. Uh, the packaging like this is really beneficial to someone that's going to throw this in a pack. Like I said, this thing does not take up a whole lot of space, doesn't weigh a whole lot, and it provides you with at least some calories. And yeah. It's nice that I have seen in past of these battle boxes, they have started including these food items. And I, I do like that because if, like this brand, I don't have any, you know, I, I don't have any kind of exposure to this brand. Um, outside of the, you know, your, your typical, uh, your typical mountain house and, and wise and all that kind of stuff. And Augustin Farms, I don't really have any you know so this is good to, to include stuff like this because this may uh, give you a chance to try stuff like this maybe find a new brand maybe even find uh, a new entree that you, you like so th this is really good I really do appreciate this this is one of the things that my old survival box used to do they used to give you the gear and the food and over time if you just take this stuff you know I have a box a big box full of freeze-dried food just from food that was included in my old survival boxes and the date on this is august 6th of 31. so yeah these things can definitely be spirited away and you know they last a long time so yeah can't say enough good things about that kind of stuff and here we got a survival uh survival filter a pro portable water filter pump Wow, that's that's actually cool. So this this takes your like your survival straw type filters and takes it up a notch by actually giving you a pump, so you can actually um, I don't know how it's going to show up. There you go. Give you a little light. Let's see. Let's read here. It of course removes you know all the crap that you don't want to get in your body it meets the epa drinking water standard which that doesn't really mean anything to me uh hundred thousand liter lifespan that's that's actually pretty good improves the taste and odor of water so that means it has a carbon filter yes stage one is an ultra filter pre-filter it's 0.1 micron ultra filter then it has a carbon filter and then it has an internal ultra filter which is a 0 0.01 micron all right well i know that i don't know how much it's going to filter if you are pulling some really disgusting water through it it's going to plug those filters up really quick it says it reduces heavy metals bpa free design triple filter technology very cool but i don't have any uh, exposure to this brand as well so i don't know how readily available uh, what's the brand name? Uh, I don't know. It just says survival filter. Okay. I don't know how easily accessible these filter replacements are. So that would definitely be something that you would have to look into because obviously, uh, if you look at the if you
you look at the uh, little picture there, diagram of it, these filters do look like they, they might, they look like they're kind of a proprietary type job. So it might not be something you can easily just, you know, find off the shelf. So that would be something to check into if you got this box, you know, just keep in mind that availability of items like that to keep you going. And finally, we have the knife. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and cheat and peek in the uh, little bag here, the little uh, brochure. See what they say about the knife. This is a Revo RJ1. Okay, that's the knife we're working with here. And it is from RevoKnives.com is the company. And let's check it out. All right. This one actually comes with some stuff. We get a little manual and we get a little sticker. We get the little Revo sticker. And you get a little <clears throat> get a little information here, a little information uh, trifold about the knife. All right. Does have a sheath that has attachments see how does this okay this is this is cool I, I do like this this is kind of a cut above a, a standard you know stamped uh, sheath <clears throat> you actually it actually has a lock right here on the end that you push in and you open it up and you can and he has a, a, a channel here where a belt or strapping can go through and then you Let's see, let's check a look at this lock. Okay, the lock is actually, if you can see, it's, it's this big plastic hook, but it goes into this metal pin. So that should give you a pretty, it should give you a very, very confident lock. And also this hinge, if you can see the this hinge is also a, metal pin so it's not like this is just going to snap off you know because it's made of plastic <clears throat> and it <clears throat> as you can see here it has a, it only has the four screws in the corners there and it has multiple holes so I'm, I'm just guessing you can <clears throat> you know you can reconfigure maybe how this thing goes although looking at it I don't really see how you would do that but anyway, let's look at the knife. And it does have a has good retention. The knife does stick out, you know, pretty good a little bit, but let's see. Oh yeah. Oh wait a minute, what's going on here? Okay, maybe that doesn't hold it as well as I thought. And actually, is it the nice fault? I mean, the uh, she's fault? Yeah. Uh, you can see, hopefully, I can get some light to pick that up. You see right here, this is separated. This screw is holding it. It's, it's holding it all the way closed there, but it's allowed it to open up right here, which is giving it just enough give like if I pinch right here if I pinch right there but if I let go of it I get it right out okay well you know hey that just is what it is the knife yes it's, it's gonna come out so something to be aware of Revo knives is that you need to maybe put another uh, you know something simple as, as a little screw right there you know, right here, putting another screw like right here would close this up enough to where that would be an issue. But anyway, let's just check out the knife. Some more. It's, it's kind of a. It's a definitely a. It's a uh, sort of a hodgepodge of of uh, shapes. There, it's kind of like a spear point, but it's got a sweep to it and it does have 
full time. Of course, all these knives are full time. You know, you're not really going to see anything other than that with knives that cost more than ten bucks. You do have a pommel here that you could use to strike with. It does have a hole, so you, you can do some lashing with it. It does have a very big cutout here for your index. Very big. I mean, you can see, you can see that that I have just tons of tons of room here, tons of room. So if you got bigger gorilla hands, you know it's not going to be an issue for you. And then the the second there is, is the second finger is just you know, you know, like any other handle, just it's right where it needs to be. Uh, I hate to say it, I really don't like the way this knife feels. It does have some some chimping here at the at the top to give you uh, to give you uh, good thumb placement and thumb grip. But for some reason, that this being such a this right here being such a sweep forward like this, I just I don't I don't like it. I just I don't I don't care for it. I don't like it. And then this being just smooth behind this finger. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. Maybe I'm just being weird, but I just I don't like the way this knife feels in my hand. I just don't like it. Don't like it. So blade length 3.875, cutting edge 3.625, handle length 4.375, overall length 8.25. It is 9 CR stainless steel. It has a 130 thousandths blade thickness. So yeah, the blade, the blades. You know, this is a good bushcraft knife. And this is a drop point grind or drop point blade. It has a flat grind. So sorry about that. But yeah, it looks it looks cool. I mean, they left the top up there rough. You see you can see the the uh, difference, the transition from the polished blade, the very back here, and the, a little bit of the top is this very like rough metal. Gives the knife a little personality, you know. And I hate to say it because when you, when you look at it, you know, when when you're just looking at it, it, it it's it's a good looking knife, you know. I, I don't don't have anything against it other than, for me personally, I just I don't prefer having this much openness right here on my index finger. I just don't like that. And again, personal preference. Some many of you out there would probably get this knife and you'd love it, and that's perfectly fine. So yeah, other than the only complaint I would have is the sheath that being able to just the knife fall out so if you had this on a pack and and, and you're, you're throwing your pack around you don't want the knife to go flying you know and like i said if you were to get this of course this is something that can, that can very easily be remedied by just putting a little screw right there and it'll it'll hold it tight so yeah that is the revo RJ1, $125 for this is what they're claiming on the price. And if it's a non-CR stainless blade, <clears throat> you know, a little bit over 100 bucks. That's kind of the typical, typical price for a knife in that category. They're saying uh, you got $13 on the chili and the little uh, bands, retain, uh, retention bands, they're $17.95. The deodorizing pods were 20 bucks. The little weight weather radio was 35 bucks. Now here's here's something that might surprise you, or it might not. Certainly surprises me to see it. This filter, this water filter is 70 bucks. 70 bucks for the water filter. Which you know I'm not going to put a price on when I need if I need filtered water. Uh, 70 bucks is a drop in the bucket, but the availability of getting replacement filters would be something I would have to look into, and yeah. So yeah, this is this is a mission brief seventy nine for September twenty twenty one. Tell me what you think. Do you like uh, these items? Uh, certainly, these are all very usable items. So none of it was just you know fluff for the sake of just throwing in you know stuff to make the box uh, more appealing. Um, I, 
do, as I said, I do continue to appreciate the inclusion of food item in these boxes. I hope they really continue that because that's always a welcomed thing to have. So yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching and uh, like the video if you like it, uh, dislike it if you want to be a jerk. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.